This is Dr. Manoj Agarwal. I am a gastroenterologist and a liver specialist. Uh, today is the World Liver Day and really speaking WHO actually uh, supported this from 2012 onwards and the objective was, of this was to actually create awareness amongst people about the liver and liver disorders. Now let me tell you something, what is the liver? The liver is actually a very important organ in our body. It's a very complex organ. It takes care of various things. It helps in digestion. It helps in controlling our immune responses to various infections and other things in the body. And it also acts as the first filter to anything which we eat, drink, which enters our body finally. So if things go wrong with the liver, it not only affects, you may not only have symptoms related to the liver, but actually it could affect various of the other organs in the body and can lead to serious problems. Now, the awareness is important because you need to keep your healthy if you want to remain healthy. So, you should actually try to understand what are the things which cause damage to the liver and how can we prevent it. Liver diseases actually world over are increasing. In fact, if you look at obesity, if you look at a fatty liver which almost affects 30% of the population and this is not only true in you know western populations where people may be overweight but it's more true in our country. If you look at India, we are known as the diabetes capital of the world and along with that there is a severe metabolic derangement which is there and that leads to fatty liver and now we are aware that fatty liver finally goes on to a stiffness of the liver which is called liver fibrosis and ultimately cirrhosis and then from cirrhosis you can also develop liver cancer. So this is one of the important causes. The second very important cause is alcohol. The consumption of alcohol if you look at it is increasing in our community and gradually it's becoming an acceptable social norm. You'll find teenagers, young people drinking which earlier people would never imagine things which would happen in parties only occasionally but drinking alcohol has now become sort of socially acceptable and more than that actually people tend to have binge drinking uncontrolled drinking and alcohol is responsible for almost half 30 to 50 percent of patients who present with what is known as end-stage liver disease that is say, cirrhosis with complications so alcohol again remains a very very important cause. Viral hepatitis, particularly hepatitis B and C, if it enters your body, it tends to remain inside you for years to come. So what is known as chronic hepatitis B or C. And that slowly damages the liver and again can lead on to end stage liver disease which is cirrhosis. Fortunately, for hepatitis B there is an excellent vaccine available and now our children are getting immunized as part of the universal immunization program. Pregnant women are being screened for hepatitis B so that you know it can be picked up and you can prevent transmission from mother to child well in time with the use of vaccine and some other preventive measures known as immunoglobulin. Hepatitis C there is much more awareness and the best thing about hepatitis C is that the treatment has become simple now just like any other infectious disease. So the results of the treatment are very good. Only thing is the awareness that yes, if it is there, it should be diagnosed because still we have a huge number of patients of hepatitis C who are undiagnosed and who are there in our community. So broadly speaking, these are the more important causes of liver disease. We need to be very aware of the medications and drugs which we consume, the toxins, various other toxins which may be coming into our diet whether it is Ayurvedic, Allopathic, Homeopathic or anipathy, I think you should be very careful about drugs because now there is more and more growing evidence that drug induced liver disease is a problem and if you also have happen to be having a fatty liver on the background or alcoholic liver disease or a viral disease and you also consume a hepatotoxic drugs the effect is not going to be 1 plus 1, 2 it's going to be 1 plus 1 and the effect may be 10 times more. So. I think you should never take medications on your own. You should uh, only take it if prescribed. And you, you have every right to ask, is this liver toxic? 
Now, what happens if you get liver disease? You can, you may be asymptomatic. Actually, you may have no symptoms at all. You may have a liver illness and you may be just going around. Only symptom may be fatigue, tiredness. Sometimes it's picked up just on some routine test like an elevated liver enzyme, which is known as SGOT or SGPT. And that's about it. Or if you go to see a doctor for some other reason and they put their hand on your tummy and they say your liver is enlarged and then you go ahead and do an ultrasound, you might find that it's a fatty liver. So from this asymptomatic stage or minimum symptoms, subsequently you may have some discomfort in your upper abdomen. You may then develop frank jaundice. And when liver disease is full blown, you have the full spectrum of disease, which is, you know, if it is cirrhotic, then you might end up getting bleeding into the GI tract. You can have swelling of the legs, swelling of the abdomen, jaundice. And unfortunately, some of these people actually go on to develop liver cancer. Now, the prevention, in, in, when, when it comes to liver disease, there's no, you know, the rule of prevention is better than cure, is most apt. Fatty liver disease is becoming a pandemic. I mean, we talked about coronavirus as a pandemic and we saw its effect, but it was all very short lived. In the sense, whatever damage it did, it just did and sort of uh, we could see it straight away with, with the eyes. But fatty liver is a worldwide pandemic. It slowly and um, definitely affects the liver and damages it. And more and more patients with fatty liver disease are now landing up requiring liver transplants. So we need to be aware of this. And even our small children, you know, now with the food habits which you have about eating fast food, junk food, snacks, ice creams, juices, uh, irritated drinks, they're all contributing to, to it. Very easy availability of these things. So the steps which you can do is, number one is you need to be aware that yes, liver disease is in reality and it is it can affect any one of us. Number two, if something is vaccine preventable, definitely go and please take the vaccine for that. Lifestyle modification is actually something which we need to introduce right from our, into our children itself. Physical activity, some sort of physical exercise and eating a regulated diet and maintaining, trying to maintain your ideal body weight. This will go a long way in preventing liver disease. This will also go a long way in preventing heart disease, in brain disease in metabolic syndromes, in so many other things. Because all these, many of these diseases are actually interlinked. The final, you know, common pathway might be similar. So it's important to inculcate this habit of exercise and controlled eating. Alcohol, occasionally, small quantities, no binge drinking. That should be the norm, if at all. If you don't drink alcohol, nothing like it. You should be careful when you take any medication over the counter. And if you feel that, you know, something is wrong with you or if anybody suggests that something is wrong in the investigations, even subtle abnormalities, do not ignore it. Go and see your family physician. If they think that you should see a hepatologist or so-called liver specialist, you can go to them so that you are guided properly and whatever can be done to, you know, prevent this disease from becoming cirro going into cirrhosis or liver malignancy should be done. Thank you.